The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Lord, be on my mind, be on my lips, and in my heart. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony, to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask, Who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. And so they asked him, What are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said to them, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. And so they said to him, Who are you? So that we can give an answer to those who sent us. What do you have to say for yourself? And he said, I am the voice of the one crying out in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord, as Isaiah the prophet said. Some Pharisees were also sent, and they asked, Why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ or the Elijah or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. But there is one among you whom you do not recognize, one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. So it's two weeks in a row now we heard about the figure John the Baptist in this time of Advent. John the Baptist is important for several reasons, not all of which I even know. But last week he was calling us to prepare our hearts for the Lord's coming. Prepare a way for the Lord to remove the obstacles of God coming into our life. This week I would like to focus on a different aspect of John's ministry. To point others to the light. To point others to Christ. One of the reasons why we have the figure of John is to teach us our role, us the church, to testify to the light. The light is God and what God has done in our midst and in our lives. How often do we truly find ourselves testifying to what God has done to others, bringing them to Christ? You know, we don't talk about it as much in the Catholic Church, is my experience. But many churches have classes on how to talk about Christ to others. And I would like to suggest that there's three easy steps. First step is to share with another what God has done for you, what God has done for us. How God, when I was in the deepest or darkest part of my life, gave me purpose or mission or focus, or helped me know that I was not forgotten, or loved, or God healed me, or God worked out these difficult financial issues when I finally surrendered to him. Step one. Step two is to share very briefly what and who Jesus is. Jesus is truly God, come into our humanity, not only to forgive us of our sins, but to transform that humanity into the humanity God intended for all time from the Garden of Eden, filled with God's presence and God's peace. God's presence and peace can enter your life, our lives, so that we are filled with love, hope, joy. And then the third step, 
invite Christ into your life. He wants to fill you. He wants to be your Savior and to live with you. Invite him into your heart. Three easy steps, right? Testify what God has done in your life. Explain briefly who Christ is and why Christ would make a difference. And invite the other person then to accept Christ and invite Christ even with doubt. Say, Lord, if you're truly God, enter my life. If you can really make a difference, show me. And invite a person to pray that way. And even if they are open to it, to pray with them that way. But today, I would be amiss if I didn't talk about joy. That's what the readings are about today. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, we hear in the first reading, and has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings, good news to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, proclaim liberty to captives, a relief from, to prisoners, a year of favor from the Lord. Rejoice heartily in the Lord my God, the joy of my soul. He has clothed me with a robe of salvation. Put a diadem on my head like a king or like a bride bedecked with her jewels. The response oral saw Mary. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My soul rejoices in God my Savior. Or St. Paul. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks. In all circumstances, give thanks. But, but I'm sick. But I have difficult troubles in my life. How can I give thanks? The miracle that God wants to work in our lives is that even in the midst of very difficult situations, God's joy can be a part of our life that we can testify to. God wants to give us that gift. You know, I know it's easy for me to say, but when times are good, it's sometimes a lot easier to be joyful, isn't it? But when times are difficult, to still have that joy, which is a miracle, a fruit of the Holy Spirit, actually gives greater testimony to others of God and his power. And so I was reading this week from Jude Siliciano, one of the of Dominican friars I read to help prepare for the homily. And he shares a story of how he weekly gets a call from a prisoner on death row awaiting the electric chair, the death penalty. And he says that in the prison, there's over 3,000 people who have COVID. They're all confined to their cells. This particular prisoner has cancer and he's undergoing treatment, feeling sick from it often while awaiting the death penalty. And Father Jude asks, how do you keep going? How do you have hope? And he says, Jesus Christ, I pray. He is my strength. Just yesterday, a person that I married from my last first parish was buried, 41-year-old young lady who, of great faith, spent all her life since college graduating with a master's degree working for youth programs, for youth who had no parents or no guidance, and she tirelessly worked almost every day, all 12, 14, 16 hours, didn't really have a home of her own, but lived in the house where they invited other youth for their ministry. Her and her husband, who was a skateboarder, married and dedicated their lives to serving the youth. He brought them in, with, taught them the sports, and he, she taught, educated them and taught them other skills. She had cancer, and I talked with her several times on her deathbed still had great faith, uh, not knowing why at such a young age and having done so much good, she would pass. But that faith still has a greater testimony. And she probably packed into her life more years than many of us. And as her passing, there was an article in the newspaper with youth after youth who testified how she changed her life, their life. And so 
that joy is possible even in difficult situations. Many of you are suffering, and I know I talk to you. Loved ones are suffering. Yet through it all, you still have that faith, that hope. Deacon Scott Palmer served this parish for many years, continues cancer treatment. I don't think he'd mind telling, I hope not, 40 treatments. He's been still working through it all, and he decided to make it a Lenten journey. Every day on the way to treatment, he would pray and listen in to talks and give God thanks. God wants to give us that joy. Let me read a few more scriptures from passage, uh, passages from scripture. Nehemiah it says, Do not be grieved, for the joy of of the Lord is your strength. Romans, St. Paul, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Galatians, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. The Gospel of John, chapter 15. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Chapter 16. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be complete. And so also you have sorrow now, but I will see you again. And your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. God wants to give us this gift. My suspicion, sadly, is that one of the reasons why we don't testify enough about God to others is because we've not fully experienced that joy that nothing can take away. We, too, might be like those persons in the first reading, the prisoners still in captive or in the dungeon in the darkness waiting for the Lord to come and set us free. We are called to be like that voice in the desert crying out in the midst of the dryness of our lives, the difficulties of our world right now and the barrenness of our heart saying, come Lord into my heart, come Lord into our world. Let us prepare a way for the Lord. Let us ask for that miracle anew this Christmas, that he may put that supernatural joy, peace, hope, love into our hearts, that no matter what we're going through, we will have God's presence as our strength, and the world will see. And let us not be ashamed to testify to others what God has done for us, who Jesus is, and invite them to ask also for that joy that comes from God with us.